Okay. Let's have a look at what now can we observe from these two graphs, right? You have that understanding now. We've sketched a positive exponential graph with the inverse, which is the log graph, and we've sketched the negative exponential graph with its inverse, which was an, uh, a log graph as well. Now, I have a summary here, and I want you to have a look and see if you can notice something. This is the exponential graph, like I said, versus the log. As you can see what I have here, that is my exponential graph, right? y equals 2x, that is the log graph, and that is obviously my mirror, or the reflection point, y equals x. Then I gave this to you earlier, where I said, in the exponential graph, the function is y equals 2 to the power x. I said, the domain, y is an element of all real numbers, the range is y is greater than 0, or we can write it as y is an element between 0 to infinity, and we can see the exponential is an increasing function. Now, if we look at the log function, the function is y equals the log of x with base 2. Now, looking at this is the graph here. Your domain, remember the x values, can you see that this graph can only, it cannot touch this uh, y is equal to 0. So, it must be greater than 0 in this direction. So, you understand that the domain for the log graph is x greater than 0 in this direction. Or we can write it as x is an element from 0 to infinity. The range for this graph, can you see we go down, down to infinity for y, we will go up, up to infinity for positive y. And that's why for range we will say y is an element of all real numbers, and we can also see that for oh, number 4, that is an increasing function. Can you see anything that you can observe there? Just send me that answer. See if you can see something in the exponential compared to the logs. Have a look at it carefully, learners. I'll give you a few seconds. Then I have special messages while you look at that. It's a Courtney it's, 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 and, and Nuran from Rockland's High. We have Tabani High, a visitor there. And then um, we have and this way that's also asking about the log graph. Let's have a look at what she wants. Um, a visitor asks, can you please repeat the domain? Not a problem, let's have a look. The domain, what you need to understand, the domain means x value. Now of the log graph, we are looking for all possible x values of that log graph. Bearing in mind that y equals to 0 is your asymptote. Remember what an asymptote is? The graph cannot touch or go over it. So that is a brick wall. So the only possible values we can have for the domain is from this point here to the right. Now, if I move from this point to the right, can you see we will, the value increases. So, is any x value greater than 0? Remember, it cannot include 0. Why? Because y equals to 0 is the asymptote. It cannot touch the asymptote. And therefore, the domain is from this point going to the right. And that is why we write it. Remember, in these two, um, you don't have to write both. These two has exactly the same meaning. You can just write x is greater than 0, or this means x is greater than 0 until to infinity. I hope that that will help um, the learner there. Okay, learners, uh, the one thing I would like you to do, or what I can observe here, I didn't get now any answers, but okay, I will help you. If you look at this carefully in the exponential and the log, is that you can see that the domain of the exponential graph is the same as the range of the log graph. You see these two. The domain of the exponential graph is the same as the range, and then we can also say the same thing. The range of the exponential graph is the same as the domain of the log graph. Right? It's just some very interesting you know, thing that we will have to see. Um, Thank you, Francois, uh, from Bushman, Bushman High. 
where it says just the log is the inverse of the exponential. Absolutely, you can do that as well. Okay, let us, we have two more questions that I would like to go through. We have some time so we'll be able to finish it. In this question is, and normally this creates a problem. The problem is, what if they give you the graph? And then you need to interpret answers from that. Now I know this normally creates a problem because learners don't know how to approach this. Number one, it says here, the sketch below represents a graph of fx equals k to the power of x. Now you see, that is an exponential graph. Right? What's given there is point A, which we don't know. That's according to the sketch. And also what's given is point B, where the coordinates are half and two. In other words, B has the x value of half, and the y value of 2. Right? So that is a given graph, and as we can see, it's a positive exponential graph. Question number one, determine the value of k. Now, okay, they want us to find the value of k, which is given as fx equals k to the power x. Now remember, we know fx also means y equals k, to the power of x. So if we want, if we write down that, remember we want the value of k. The thing that's missing there, or what we can do, is that what if we have the x value and the y value? If we can have that and substitute in there, we would be able to find k. Now if you look at that carefully on your sketch, is what's given is that they give you x point, and they give you a y point, or x value and a y value. So be careful, when you need to substitute x and y values to find a variable, those points must be on the graph, right? On the graph. So the point given here, x is a half, y is 2. So that means, let me just write it here, x is a half, y is equal to 2. Now substitution will take place, and if we do that, we're going to say y is equal to 2 equals, and then we have k, and your x value is equal to a half. Now, I know it looks quite tough. Why? Because we have k to the power of a half is equal to 2. It's not something where we can say, if we take a half over, we divide. Remember, a half here is an exponent. And grade 11, there was a chapter you've, you've covered that says, if you have a rational exponent, another word for rational, if you have an exponent which is a fraction, the best way to get rid of it is to multiply by its inverse. So whatever you multiply on the one side, you multiply on the other side. So just make sure you understand, whenever your exponent is a fraction, the best way to get rid of that is to substitute by its, or to multiply by its inverse. Now, multiply by its inverse means I need to multiply by 2 over 1. So, the opposite of the inverse of half is 2 over 1. But what I do on the one side, I do on the other side as well. And therefore, if we do that, we can see these two will cancel, and we will sit with k there, and then 2 to the power of 2, that means that gives you equal to 4, right? So k is equal to 4 is our first question over there. The next question, determine the coordinates of the y-intercept of f. In other words, they want to know what is the coordinates of a. Now I know all of you will know what the answer is, because we said any answer or any exponential graph will cut the y-axis at that specific point. We know it must be 1, right? But we need to show it that it is 1. So, what do we need to do? What is the, the, the equation now? Remember the k value is 4. So, if you substitute that in there, we're going to say y is equal to k value as 4 to the power 
of x. Okay? And if you look at that carefully, point A is on the y axis. So, if it is on the y axis, then it means the corresponding x value is 0. So, therefore, if I want the coordinates of A, which is the y intercept, I have to make x equals to 0. And as Andusma and Andalusi was told us earlier, that anything to the power 0 is equal to, to 1. Now, just the one thing that you have to be careful. Remember, if you write only y is equal to 1, you are bound to lose a mark. Why do I, have to, I say that? Is because they ask you here for coordinates. And remember, coordinate means x value and a, a value. Now, if I have to write down as coordinates, we will write it down. The x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is 1. 3.3. I think this is probably quite easy for you. Write down the equation of f to the power minus 1, the inverse of f in the form y equals. Now, as we know, because we've calculated that value, we know the equation of f is y equals 4 to the power of x. Right? We know that. Now, whenever you have to write the inverse, remember what is the first golden rule? Swap x and y. Okay, so if we swap them, we're going to have x equals 4 to the power of y. And in exponential form, we know that the inverse of any exponential graph is a log graph. So writing that into log form, back to the definition, right? I see Langisa, and we have a visitor in Iran that is giving us the answers. Thank you very much to you learners. I see you do understand the work, right? So x equals to 4 to the power of y means, write it into log form, the log of the number, the number is x, is equal to the exponent, which is y, and the base is equal to 4, right? And therefore, the equation of the inverse is going to be the log of x with base 4 is equal to y. 